paying attention yesterday, you would see that the Hess, uh, when, when, when Hess came, that it was Councilman Morocco who stopped Hess and began to get more money from them when they first came. If you watch the council meetings and attend them now or before, you will see that every tax abatement that comes up is scrutinized by this councilman now, every single time they come up. And, and I stop them over and over again and make them come up with criteria as to why we should give them an abatement. Over and over, if you, watch, if you participate in the council meetings now, if there are people in this audience who've been to a few council meetings, they would know that. And if, if the professor knew what really went on in City Hall, he would stop saying that the council gave itself raises because I just had the city clerk research that the, uh, the other day and he sent, sent me a letter, letter that clearly says, since 1985, the law has been the same. The council elected in 2006 and 2010 has never voted to increase their salary at all. I mean, where, I don't understand where this stuff is coming from. And I'm not attacking people, so I don't know where this thing will be. The only person that's attacking somebody is this guy. What we're talking about, what I'm talking about is ideas. I'm talking about how we move the city forward. Right? I'm not talking about a whole car that the police department used to use and now we give it to the council to drive around. That's not going to improve. Uh, we take those cars away. I'm talking about economic vitality. I'm talking about jobs for Newarkers. I'm talking about putting people to work, uh, using the seaport, using the airport, using the universities, using the hospitals, using these people to transform our city. Not this kind of venom that's being spewed every day to beat each other up and demean each other. I used to be that way 20 years ago in 1994 when I ran for mayor against Sharp, I acted just like Shabbat. I was upset and angry all of the time about the things that happened in the city. Then I got some real experience. Then I ran for office. Then I went to PTA meetings. Then I showed up at anti-violence rallies. Then I went to the things. If you want to talk about the South Ford, in three years I've been in the South Ford, and now we have a, a special improvement district in the South Ford that we never had. If you want to talk about the South Ford, we talk about how we began to organize the county police and Newark police to do patrols up and down the street. We, we began to knock down abandoned properties in the South Ford and began economic development in that ward in three years. Three years. That's all I've been here. Three years. What I'm going to ask the crowd to do is to please refrain from uh, clapping or cheering for your candidate. I understand that you're enthused about this, and I am too. But I'm going to ask that you refrain from doing that until the end of the q and A. I'm calling this. I'm not even calling it a debate. What I have, the next question is about term limits. I know our current mayor promised he would do something about term limits for the council, but that has never been addressed to my knowledge. Question that I have for now is what are your thoughts on term limits for the council and mayor's office? Please advise why you are for or against term limits. I forgot, did you begin last time for Mark? So honestly, the, the politically correct thing to say is that you support term limits, and I'm sure People are going to get up here and say, I support term limits. Uh, the reality is, I think, ultimately, the people in the community uh, support term limits when they vote people in and out, right? So they, they vote you out of office, then that means that they don't want you in there anymore. It does, not, it does not mean, however, that I don't agree that we should discuss some term limits. But what I do uh, want to make clear is that the people in the community decide the terms of the people who serve. So when the, people, when the community is organized and they're engaged, and they're uh, involved, and they decide who should run and govern their lives. The problem in our city is that our lives are being run by special interests. They're being run by bosses, they're being run by parties, and they're being run by Wall Street. And, and we can't have more of the same. So what we need to do is begin to run the community or run the city ourselves. And that's what I'm saying, that we do it as a collective, that the city develops a movement of people that runs their own lives. And that's what I'm saying. If that means two terms, three terms, that's fine. And I'm willing to, to have a discussion and a debate about it, a real debate about ideas. And I'm waiting for that debate to happen. I'm waiting for us to get into a debate about ideas, right? Because right now, we just debate uh, about things that are, you know, ad hominem and, and character and all this other stuff. So let's debate the real issues that affect us every single day. Okay, so, I just something. So you're 
telling me, are you for or against term limits, or you just think that the people should decide on the term limits? I, I think the people should decide. So you don't think there should be a ordinance or maybe something on the ballot about term limits? If it was something on the ballot, then the people would decide. Would you be uh, for doing something like that? Sure. Putting something on the ballot yes. in regards to term limits? Yes. Okay, same question. Thank you. And, and I want to be you know, very clear. Um, everything I'm talking about, these are policy choices. I have no venom to I respect uh, the opponents in this campaign. Uh, so this is not anything personal. I've, I've never said anything personal to anybody. There's no venom, there's no animus. I'm simply saying that when you raise the people's taxes, for these are budgetary choices that your government is making with respect in terms of your money. Uh, so if we have a deficit, and the way in which the council decides to close the deficit is to raise your taxes 40% over the last few years, <laughs> to do a sale, lease back that is frankly a gimmick. You might have to pull the credit card out. Again, we, we got $40 million in. You're going to pay $125 million to get $40 million in. I think those are bad choices, right? We laid off almost 170 cops. I think those are bad choices. We gutted neighborhood services. I think those are bad choices. And while they did that, what they didn't look at are these perks, right? Are these cars? And the council did give themselves, they call it longevity bonuses. So they don't call that a raise. So in the city of North, they give themselves a longevity bonus in 2011 so that your council makes 80 $5,000. Jersey City, which is the same size as the city of York, they make $33,000. What I'm saying simply is, before I look at you and take more money out of your pocket, I'm not going to drive around in a car. That's outrageous. I'm not going to increase my salary or raise your taxes 40%. That's outrageous. I'm not going to lay off your cops while we have a culture of nepotism in the city. That's outrageous. That sort of stuff is already illegal in most parts of the United States, but that's part of our culture. So when you even critique it, then it's, oh, it's venomous. No, let's just move into the 21st century in terms of how we make our budgetary decision. So what I'm saying is we have to have a different approach to our budget. I didn't even talk about this. It's also uh, poor practice. It's not about attacking anybody. We pass our budget late every year. In 2012, there are 566 municipalities in the city of Newark, and Moody's reported this themselves. You can look it up, Moody's, which is the rating service. We came, we, were, we passed our budget second to last. We we're 565 out of 566. That's when Moody's downgraded our credit rating. So when we have to borrow, we have to pay more. They downgraded it to three notches above junk bond status. You can look it up, look up Moody's credit, credit rating. It's on Google, you can look it up and find out yourself. You can Google that in 2011, the council agreed to longevity bonuses of 5%. They don't call it raises, but the bottom line is you pay more for those salaries. That's about the budgetary choices we make. To answer your question, Yes, I, I believe in term limits, period. There's no equivocation. Uh, I, don't, I think two terms is good, three max. I absolutely agree in term limits. You need to rotate leadership. Part of the problem we have in the city of Newark is you got the same folk doing the same thing for 40, 50 years. It's the same three or four families, and it goes from one generation to the next. And what I'm simply saying is we're going to change our political culture with term limits as part of the way in which we do that. Disagree strongly with what Mr. Jeffries had to say. Would you like to rebut that? So, first, I'm going to just read the letter because I don't know if these people told you. I mean, I don't know who's telling you these lies. The ordinance that set the schedule for longevity eligibility was adopted by the Newark Municipal Council in November of 1985, has been the same law since that time. Here, let me just give you a copy of it so you can be saying that again. Um, you, you can keep that. But also, if also, all of the other things, also all of the, the things that the professor talked about, I agree. That's why I didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for the laying off police, of police officers. I didn't vote for a budget to raise people taxes. I voted against it. I did my duty as a, as a councilman of the South Ward and voted against those things. And I understand that those things need to be changed. That's why I'm running for mayor. Because at the mayor's seat is when you begin to control the things that that, that the professor keeps talking about, but he keeps talking about it as it relates to the council, but it's the duty of the mayor. Because if it was the council that was the problem, then he should probably be running for South Ward Councilman. But the fact that he knows, and I know, and it's disingenuous to kind of tell people that it's the, the, the council's responsibility, but it's the mayor's responsibility, it's just wrong. The mayor has the responsibility to do these specific things, and that's why we're here debating in the mayor's candidacy, in the mayor's race, not a council race. But beside all of that, my plan is progressive. It's not about uh, uh, cars and, 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 and pay and sell these back. I believe sell these back is a gimmick. It is a gimmick. That's why 
We need to find revenue. That's why we need economic vitality in the city. That's why we need to engage the seaport. That's why we need to create jobs. That's why we need a deputy mayor of full employment. That's why we need to begin to expand small business. A manufacturing base creates 6,000 jobs in the city of Newark. Crime is diminished when you increase people's quality of life. That's what we're talking about. Our plan is about improving the city of Newark, not beating up on individuals or blaming people or pointing fingers at City Hall or pointing fingers at Cory Booker or pointing fingers at Sharp or pointing fingers at other councilmen. It's about all of us collectively coming together and transforming our city. And I invite people to be a part of a progressive agenda that puts the people at the forefront of what we're doing in the city. Give Shabar two minutes to rebut what um, Councilman just said, and then we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, thank you. Um, I mean, again, the reason I think it's important to know about the record is because, again, this is a very important decision. None of us just dropped out of the, the sky to get here, so you ought to know about our record because that's going to give you that's going to give you evidence about what we're going to do. The councilman talked about what he did vote for. It's true because he missed two out of three budget votes. He didn't show up for two out of the three of the last three years. So let's be clear about that. We've had three budget votes since he voted on council. He missed two, and maybe because he has multiple public jobs. So that's part of what you want to analyze. And, uh, the, the council passes the budget for the city of North. So this thing I hear, we're not blaming anybody, but all I've heard from over here for years is all about Cory Booker. Everything is Cory Booker's fault. And I'm not here to defend him at all, but I find it very ironic that's all we've heard for years after uh, uh, year after year, the mayor, the mayor, the mayor, but then when we talk about we talk about the record the councilman has, an award that frankly is a mess. If you if anybody who wants to know what the South Board looks like, when you leave here tonight, drive up Nye Avenue, drive up Hawthorne Avenue, drive up Bergen Street. Matter of fact, put a blindfold over a dark at, at, a, at a map of the South Board, pick a street, drive it, and take a look at what you see. So at some point, what is what is the fruit of the work? So what we want to do is move to a different direction. I talked a bit about our economic development strategy. Anybody receiving a abatement or credit, we're going to demand those three things that we talked about. We're going to help small and mid-sized businesses grow through incubation programs where they can access the credit they need in order to grow. Many of our small and mid-sized businesses have great ideas, have great perspectives, but they need more technical assistance so they can access capital and small business and low interest loans so that they can grow. We're going to continue to let, we're going to continue to, to facilitate investment in the city of North. We want downtown investment. That's a good thing so that we can then turn off dollars and reinvest in the neighborhoods. Some people have been talking for about 20 years about they basically want to put up a wall around the city of North. And they seem to think any dollar that comes from somebody who doesn't already have an address in North is problematic. But when you have almost a 40% poverty rate, you need to build upon what you have by encouraging investment and then multiplying those dollars in our community. That's an overview of how we're going to approach investment. But we have to be clear. We all have a record, and that record needs to be examined. And if we don't have fruit we can point to, then that ought to not give you the confidence that we're going to get the things done that we say. Every step of the way where I've been, I'm very proud we've gotten results. And that's what we're going to bring to the city of North. Because at the end of the day, talk is cheap. We can all get up and talk about what we want to do. Uh, we can all uh, talk about what we'd like to do. But we have to get things done for the people of North. And over the last four years, we look at our crime rate, our foreclosure rate, our unemployment rate, our mismanagement of our budget. We have a lot of work to do in the city. What is your plan to stabilize property taxes in the city? Um, I believe it's your turn, Ross, am I correct? Red? Well, there's a series of things we have to do in order to stabilize um, our, our budget. In addition to the things that we are talking, I've spoken a fair amount about already in terms of some of the perks that, frankly, are outrageous. In addition, our health care budget is out of control. We spent almost $90 million uh, on health care expenses. We spend, uh, on a per-insured basis, dramatically more uh, than other organizations of our size. Our insurance brokerage contracts are, frankly, exorbitant. We can, say, we can extract some savings there. Uh, we can look at going to a self-insured model versus a fully insured model, which other large organizations do. We can extract some savings there. Our payroll tax is basically on an honor roll system. So we do much more aggressive enforcement. Again, as a prosecutor, which is what my background is, I know how to do enforcement. I have a long record of getting that done. Uh, our parking tax payments are based on honor roll system. We can use technology now so we can have a much more accurate tracking of who, in fact, 
is parking downtown north, particularly during events where we're supposed to get 22 percent. Right now, it's primarily a cash business, so we don't even really know how much we're supposed to get. If we use technology more effectively, we can better track and capture, and then realize that 22 percent that'll help stabilize uh, property taxes. Same with our hotel uh, taxes. We're now recovering there to the greatest extent possible. Our water infrastructure is decaying, so we have some reports say up to 30 percent leakage where water is spilling out of the system. And we also can't accurately track how much water we're delivering to consumers, businesses, and individuals, so we then can't realize the money that we can get back. I don't support the MUA uh, approach at all, but what we can do is we can borrow. Now again, that borrowing is more expensive because of budget mismanagement, because our credit rating is going down. That's why this stuff matters. Right? It's not about attacking anybody. Right? This is about when you make these choices, when you can't pass a budget on time, when we have these perks, and then Moody's downgrade your credit rating, then when you need to borrow next time, you got to pay more money, that hurts your ta property tax and it hurts your services. So in any case, we can borrow, which is going to be more expensive now, uh, against future water payments to then fix the infrastructure. Then over the long haul, then we can hopefully realize some of those savings by fixing those infrastructure. So from our health care expenses to our hotel uh, taxes, payroll, water, uh, parking as well, we can realize some savings on the expense side. On the revenue side, we have to do the things I'm talking about. Uh, we have to do the things I talked about in terms of small business growth, mid-sized business growth, leveraging our tax abatement and our tax credit policy to generate more economic development, and letting the world know Newark is open for business. We want anybody from the world to invest a dollar in Newark, because every dollar that comes here, we're going to then reinvest in the people of Newark. What we don't want to do is build a wall around the city of Newark, and what we also don't want to do is create an atmosphere that's a circus. Because some of the things that happens in our council meetings, some of the things that happens in our environment is a circus. And, and, and we have some folk uh, who seem to think that's a good thing, that we can't have civil conversation and debate about ideas, but if somebody disagrees, you gotta yell. And it's very ironic when we talk about who's attacking who, because some folk, all they do is attack your character, attack your person. They, you, when you speak, they wanna sh shout you down. They wanna cap call. So we gotta have a group that's based on data, policy, and evidence for we receive. I, I agree with the part that we need uh, data, policy, and information. So I would invite everybody to go to uh, my website, razjbaraka.com, and download our economic plan, economic development plan for the city of Newark. Uh, when you download this, you'll be able to understand what our policy is around creating economic growth and jobs for the city of Newark. Uh, there's a, a bunch of folks that have been working around the clock trying to save uh, you know, spending in the city of Newark. Uh, the mayor has laid off hundreds of people. He thought that was the way. Sale lease back. Who thought that was the way? There, there are people trying to save revenue, uh, uh, save expenses in terms of the health care, in terms of cost. They're trying to do all of those things, but I'm going to tell you this. We can do all of those things on the saving side, but if we don't bring revenue in here, if we don't create the economic vitality that this city needs, we're always going to be doing those same things. And we're going to be here arguing about nights, cars from 1965 that we ride around in, as opposed to creating the kind of revenue that this city needs. That's why I'm imploring you to go look at this plan. A plan that talks about developing jobs. A plan that talks about expanding the hospitals in these communities so they, they, they can begin to take advantage of Barack Obama, President Obama, excuse me, health care plan that's just uh, about to become enacted. So businesses, these hospitals can begin to set up small clinics in our neighborhoods to expand, create jobs, and also bring money into the city. Talk about a plan here that does not lock people out. This plan does not talk about building a wall. As a matter of fact, this plan says move Newark from a local city to a regional and global one. Read it. It says Newark should be a global city, that we have an international airport, that we have the fourth largest seaport, container port in the world, in the country, that we should be benefiting from that, all of the manufacturing jobs. It talks about the 40 manu 400 manufacturers in the city of Newark, that we need to expand and put people to work, that we need the universities to have a school to career pipeline and not a school to prison pipeline. It talks about using all of the private the sector dollars here, the, the public sector dollars through government, philanthropy, all of these organizations to raise the kind of profile that we need in the city of New York. You have to put people to work, you have to put people in homes. It also talks about small business teams, sending small business teams out to work with immigrant uh, organizations, to work with women-based businesses, to work with small-based businesses, to get them to expand, put more people there. It talks about uniting them with uh, the universities and their IT uh, departments to begin to develop high-tech jobs, because the Milken Institute says, 
when you create one high-tech job, you create two professional jobs, and three non-professional jobs. That's what this is talking about. It talks about that right here. I read the, the, the Brookings Institute on uh, manufacturing in the city of Newark, and they say manufacturing is how the city is going to move itself forward. I also talk about a deputy mayor for full employment. Read it. It's not a building a wall. What it says, it is a plan to revitalize our city. And it's also a plan that invites you to be a part of it. That's what it is. It's not talk. Read it. Put your ideas on paper. Let us see them. Let us engage them. Let us debate them. Let us read them. Right here. I invite you. RazJBaraka.com. Download it. Look at it, and then when you come to the next debate, talk to me about the ideas that I have put on this paper. If you disagree with this, then let's talk about that. But don't make up things uh, to excite people so we can go back and forth. department requires an estimated $500 million worth of repairs. What is your plan